G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Now, back to G.I. Joe. Hey guys, and welcome back. It's going to be part two of our in-depth look at G.I. Joe, a real American hero. The 80s cartoon that we all love. <laughs> We're in part two of the first miniseries that aired in 1983. The title of this one is The Mast of Ice Part Two, Slaves of the Cobra Master. In this exciting episode, Destro laughs. <laughs> Duke gets a stick of magic bubble gum. I am Selena. Slip this between your headband and your forehead, and you will be able to interrupt the control waves. It will cause you agonizing pain, but you will be free to run. Jerk. This is my ticket out of here. Tripwire plays Spin the Robot. We got this one shaking in its transistors. And Snake Eyes and Scarlet act out the end scene of Star Trek Wrath of Khan. Lowering a radioactive shield! Get out of there, Snake! There was no time for him to get out! He knew that when he brought it down to save us. There's nothing we can do for him. And we can't get at the crystals either. Ship. Out of danger. <laughs> Since this is a five-part miniseries, it picks up from where we left off last episode. You're not very good at this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Duke was captured by Cobra, and he's forced to fight in the arena of sport. He fights this, like, Samson-like guy. <laughs> I'm going to end it all just like that. He must not leave alive! But eventually Duke breaks free. And then he dies! No, no, don't worry. He gets out of that situation. <laughs> of course he does. <sighs> and meanwhile... To fight Cobra, we must build another mass device. All the Joes are trying to get the elements needed to make their own mass device and take on Cobra. To defeat Cobra, we must get our own supply of this fuel. They've got to go after some radioactive crystals. The first element we need is a radioactive crystal which can be found buried near the Arctic Circle. There's a lot of characters in this episode, but a lot of them cross over from the first episode. So we still see, you know, Cobra Commander and Destro return, Major Blood... Some of the Cobra officers actually have speaking lines in this one. They're over an hour ahead of us, Major Blood. By the time we reach the mine, our enemies will have the crystals and be long gone. I wouldn't bet on it, Lieutenant. <laughs> For the Joes, of course, Duke is back. Along with Scarlet, Snake Eyes, Stalker, and Breaker. Now how long before you can have a mass device ready for us to use against them? Well, then tell us where to find them, Doc, and we'll bring them in pronto. Then we're introduced to some new Joes for the first time in the show. Snow Job! We got the coordinates cold, pretty lady. And I'm talking cold. How do you read it? Dr. Vandermeer was right, Snow Job. The crystal mine is ahead of us, at the edge of the forest. Tripwire. Something in there bothers Snake Eyes, Tripwire. And I know better than to doubt Snake Eyes' sixth sense, Scarlet. A little sweep and scan couldn't hurt. But stay back! Doc and Cover Girl. He doesn't look good, Doc. Is he going to make it? His vital signs are weak, Cover Girl. But Duke's no ordinary man. Full emergency team ready. Who isn't really Cover Girl? <laughs> she changed, like, after the miniseries. 
she turns into a different person. Because the person, the car- the the action figure that came with the Wolverine was done differently than they originally had drawn CoverGirl in the in the show. CoverGirl in both instances does work as a supermodel and then became a G.I. Joe. And uh, But originally I think the artists thinking supermodel gave her blonde, long blonde hair and everything. But really she's like this action figure. And after this miniseries they do correct her artwork in the, uh, in the TV cartoon show here. There's a few vehicles to take note of in this one. We see the Polar Battle Bear Snowmobile. Awesome toy. I had this thing when I was a kid and I loved it. And I, in, in winters in upstate New York, I would go out in the winter and just run all over the yard with this thing and drive around, lose all the missiles. Guys would fall off. It was, it was great. <laughs> Robots offend us. I knew this wasn't one of my better days. The Cobra Snake Battle Armor makes its debut in this episode. The white version, the toy had two different versions. There were white battle armors and uh, blue. There was some dark blue battle armor. The dark blue is the rarer of the two. If you have that one, you've got a gold in your hand, man. But in this episode, they make them out to be robots, not battle armor. So... They're just dumb, blind robots that bump into each other and make stupid sounds. The Hiss Tanks make a second appearance. And then we have the Cobra Viper Glider. I never had any of the gliders. I don't know why. They would. They, I imagine they would have been pretty inexpensive, and they did come with a action figure. So, you know, you get a figure and a and a glider. That would have been pretty cool. I I think I would have been up for that as a kid if I saw that. But for some reason, my brother and I, neither one of us ever got these things. Hmm. Some really special equipment to take note of in this episode. Tripwire's mind detector has special powers. I don't pick up any life form readings. There's some funny blips on my scope, but they could be from radioactivity. I've never heard of a mind detector that can do what his mind detector does. <laughs> and speaking of Scarlet and like uh, Snake Eyes doing that scene from Wrath of Khan, what, why, why does a cave have a glass protective shield anyways? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, where, where, it's a, it's a rocky cave. Where would this thing come from? <laughs> we close out this episode with Cobra stealing the leaders of the world. The position of my country is. What happened? They're gone, man. Springs blank. Just like the Red Army. And this episode leaves us on a cliffhanger again. Is Snake Eyes really dead? Will Cobra win this one? I guess we're all going to have to wait and find out in part three. All right, guys. <laughs> so that about wraps it up, I guess. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we're going to go into part three next week. This is going to be awesome. Can't wait. <laughs> I hope you guys are as gripped to this storyline as I am, you know? <laughs> and hey, if you want to see more of these, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And if you're already subscribed, thanks a lot. It means a lot to me to uh, have you guys following along as we go on this adventure through the 1983 miniseries of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, The Mass Device. <laughs> All right, and here's some funny lines that I pulled out of this one. Um, yeah, there wasn't as many that were quite as you know spot on as that kick the mustard out of the hot dog but um these are all right i think these 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 can qualify as funny lines all right here you go thanks guys and we'll see you next week i'd say we got here before cobra then let's get those crystals and get out i'm starting to identify with frozen food save the water slave he won't be thirsty soon or anything else but pulverized. Ha, 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 ha.